Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. On this episode, we're debating those mother bleeping words in our mother bleeping movies and TV shows. This episode is all about profanity and swearing and entertainment for shame. Take this as your PSA that all the flavors in the language cabinet were going with salty. So if F words offend you, any other foul mouth words offend you, find another episode. We have hundreds of them that don't tip over the swear jar. So be prepared. That's the entire episode. Swearing in movies. Not us. Swearing in movies. Covered the bases? Okay. Let's get on with the fucking show. My name is Eric Peterson. Joining me today, my fellow hoes, John Davenport. Fuck yeah! Troy Heinrichs. If you want to hear a profanity-less version of this episode, you can pay money over on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the Hollywood Outsider. Are we going to edit it? Because I feel like that would be a lot shorter. If we get enough patrons, I'm, I'll be happy to do it. You can get an exclusive, <laughs> unedited version, which is short. It's basically like the ones they put on airplanes. It's it's the reverse. Usually you get the unedited version on Patreon. Now you're going to get the edited version. <laughs> UPKA, mother trucker. <laughs> it's like watching it All on it TV. All it is going to be Troy's word. Troy cutting in every single time is a curse word, <laughs> correcting it. So it sounds nothing like you or me, Aaron. It's going to be just Troy. <laughs> it's going to be a straight TNT cable dub. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Amanda was supposed to be here yet again. Please feel free to reach out to her on Twitter at sink into this and give her all the grief you possibly can that she can't be prepared on time or early. Tell her what a shitty human she is for not being here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Let's just wait. Nope. Still not here. Nope. Fuck that. All right. We're moving on. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of uh, swearing, mostly in regards to the movies we're talking about. We'll probably stay. No, we'll definitely stay away from. Some dicier words because nobody wants to get canceled this week. We just wanted to kind of touch on a topic that we normally... Okay, John wants to get canceled this week. I don't. I have things to pay for. Troy has things to pay for. John is like, the world. Let's go. I was really looking forward to saying cannoli and canoe as well. Oh, well. Oh, because I said no C words. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to cover all of them. I meant, uh, no, don't say can't. Say can. Oh, that's a C word too. Son of a bitch. Well, cat is definitely a swear word to you. Yeah, but. I, I hate the word cat. It reminds me of everything I don't like in the world. Snooty. It doesn't mind pussy, though, for some reason. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I, I'm sorry. I just zoned out there. With, Why did I not some, throw oh. peas in there? God damn right. it. Something <laughs> okay. brought me right back in. I can't imagine what that would be. <laughs> you want to just jump into the topic? I guess. Is there anything? Nothing, yeah, nothing's happening. Rider Strike is still going on. <laughs> We're all frozen. I was going to say, like, don't we have any news? But all of a, all of a sudden, yeah, it makes sense. So I look forward to this because John's got a pass to, to swear. So, Troy, there's a good chance he fucking yells at you if you cut him off too much. <laughs> 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 there's a good possibility he's at the ready. Guns guns ready. Guns at the hip. Yeah, it's already, it's already late o'clock over here, so. <laughs> late o'clock. That's new. I've never heard that one. All right, well, let's jump into it. So let's talk about profanity in movies and TV. I, I really, well, I guess TV does have a lot of profanity these days, right? Everything's cable started with just shit bombs. You could say shit on FX or, or any of the other channels, and AMC, I think, even had that. And then they, uh, you know, late nights or cable, paid cable, has gotten even more so. I mean, that's pretty much R-rated content all the time. Well, with streaming, you know, anything that has to do with streaming these days, even if it's a, a family show or not a family show or whatever, uh, or a show that would show up on ABC or NBC during prime time, it's got cursing in it now. I'm, I'm, and I'm reflecting to Mrs. Davis, which that, that is a perfectly good example of a show that would be on regular television fitting right in the span, you know, a time span in which, um, or time window in which, NCIS or something else would be on and they curse up a storm in that one. I haven't watched that because it's Damon Lindelof and I just know it's going to end poorly. I just don't or, understand yeah, why it's I still mean, a thing. It might, but so far it's a lot of fun. 
I just don't understand why the swearing thing is still a thing on broadcast. Like everybody says it all the time now. It's Do you feel like we're prudes? Let's before before we get into it. Do you feel like as a society, let's talk about society. God damn it. If you go over to Britain, so I hear, I you know, I can't afford it. But if if, if we had more Patreon people, <laughs> maybe it could. If you go over to like the UK or places like that, it's very much open open season, season. at all times. You know, yeah. you can swear, you can say, I mean, there's a lot of things you can swear that even I wouldn't say out loud. They're pretty casual. Yeah, I, they have a different language of swearing than we do. So uh, there's that. Well, what but, is the difference? What is the difference? It's the same well, word. Words are the same. Di- no, it's not. I mean, there's a difference between calling John a fucker and then calling our John a wanker. There's two different things there. Don't they both right. mean fucker? W- one, one involves another person and one is just yourself. Right. But okay. anyhow, it's a, it's a, okay. it's the, like the way they use swearing overseas is completely different than what, the way we do it. They're on a completely different planet. They've been doing it for so much longer. It is it is designed to be fun and colorful and not really an insult to a degree. You know, it's just supposed to be normal language. But I think you're overshooting your your thesis here where uh, o- overseas. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're you're I mean, your hypothesis of that overseas Understood. that. Um, o- overseas the difference the, in how they're swearing or not swearing they still have some rules uh, and depending on the time of day of which things come on there's still some rules in which they have to follow they're they're, they're not like uh, some freaking carny spewing out th- curse words every other word it's still within uh, the realm of reason is that what you think carnies do they run around like Eddie Murphy in the 80s yes and have small hands and smell like cabbage. <laughs> Stop. That's. <laughs> I'm actually going to see if I can make it this entire episode without cursing. You're just going to offend in every other way? That's the plan? Yeah. That's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, who am I offending? Like, there's some carnies sitting there going, you know what I want to listen to? A podcast about movies. Maybe. Maybe. Doubtful. Like, maybe if it was a podcast about kids, Maybe. What just happened? I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, so let's let's get into open discussion. How do you feel about profanity in entertainment? And I mean this like really broad. Is it something that bothers you that you feel a little too uncomfortable with sometimes? Do you feel like language can get a little too much? Like uh, I remember shows like Deadwood, right? I stopped watching Deadwood because they cursed too much, quite frankly. I just felt like it was cursing for it was swearing for the sake of swearing. And I mean, they even had a character named Swearjin, for Christ's sake. Like, it's, it's enough, all right? And it took me out of the show all the time. Or are you guys very, very comfortable swearing? You you know, everybody you know does it. It's It happens all the time, so it's pretty normal for you. I mean, our house, we had the rule where it was, um, you can't, you could swear. Like, you stub your toe and you say, like, oh, shit, or damn, or hell, or whatever. Right? You just couldn't swear at a person, so you can't call somebody you know, an asshole or a fucker or what have you. What if they are so, one? What's that? What if they are one? You can't call them even if they are one? What kind no, of No, because that? it's attacking. So oh. there's a difference between attacking, swearing, and just swearing. So you're just like, I wish there were no assholes or fuckers in this room. Uh, right. <laughs> oh, look, you're but still here, Mom. <laughs> it's not directed at anybody specifically. I think there's a place and time for it to give emphasis. And I think... The workplace would be a heck of a lot more fun too if we could swear at the workplace because you can just be like, "Hey, we're in this, we're in this shit together," you know. Mm-hmm. Let's go fuck some stuff up. <laughs> then people would be more amped up to go do the thing. I think it would take away a little bit of the professionalism. So back to entertainment, not just Troy's home life. <laughs> when you're watching TV, how do you feel about swearing? Does it take you you personally out of it, or do you not care? It doesn't bother you. You completely avoided my question. And Troy's like, I'm just going to tell you about my upbringing. We just didn't swear at people, you fucking savages. <laughs> I, it all depends on how it's used and, and in the environment in which it is used. If it makes sense, then it's fine. But if it's something that feels absolutely forced or the emphasis is all in the wrong places or the words are just ridiculous, then it just starts feeling like someone, someone a 12-year-old wrote it and they wanted it to be as offensive as possible. It has to fit within nor- a normal conversation. 
and use the normal beats that a conversation would have. Once you start breaking those beats just to purposely add words that are curse words, then it starts being dumb. I think back to, like, I'm going to mention it later, but I think about Jay and Silent Bob. You have Jay, who's this kid who is just rattling off absolutely everything he possibly can as fast as possible. And the way he, it's being delivered by Jason Muse feels very natural for that kind of person. It is grating because you don't want to like somebody like that, but at the same time, you're enjoying what he's doing on the screen, you're having fun, and it becomes okay. But when you start doing it and it and it's just a trick or something else and you feel like you're being lied to, that's a mount. Well, you said it's got to be normal conversation. Well, look, Game of Thrones doesn't feel like a normal conversation anybody I've ever heard would have. That's because it's also English from a different time period as well. <laughs> well, even when they're talking, I mean, sometimes I feel... As though they were jamming in a lot of profanity just to just to jazz up the show, you know, just to jazz up the writing, so to speak. And I feel like that happens a lot where they try to spice it up and make it edgier by adding profanity and, and cursing rather than just write it better. Well, I think it's a, it, Game of Thrones is one of those one of those shows where it depended on the character. If it fit within the character, then there would be a lot of swearing. The Hound swore, and he had a a, a specific way of delivering those swears that was cool. Uh, I can't think of other characters that swore nearly as much as the Hound did. Yeah, Jamie swearing would be weird. Right. Or Rob Stark swearing was weird. Would be weird. Or Jon uh, Snow oh, there's swearing lots of characters a lot. That swore. Tyrion's buddy, Tyrion himself. There, there were lots of but those characters. Though make sense. Those characters made sense. Yeah. A lot of the conversations, I'm like, I feel like you're just jamming in profanity here, just to. Just well, to I, you know, Gary Mathone is a is a piss poor example. Of, uh, oh that, well, that give me along. a better example then. Well, I'm going to say the reason why it's a piss poor example is because Game of Thrones is written by George R. R. Martin and a 12 year old kid. It's obvious when you're watching it on screen, that's what you're looking at. You know, they're like, oh, <laughs> let's throw let's throw boobs at every random spot we possibly can. OK, let's do this. So uh, a better example where swear, you know, I it, here's a good example. And it actually is made up swearing. And there's three good examples. You have Firefly with Goram. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Battlestar Galactica with Frack, Frack and you yeah. have uh, Farscape with Frell and Shazbot and a few other ones, or Fozbot and so, like, a few other words. They're completely made up uh, swear words, but they're used very well because they fit within the conversation. But it's a lot of fun because you know, you know if they had the choice or the ability of throwing out actual curse words they would but because they're on you know quote unquote network or early cable they're not throwing out curse words like like crazy so they just made up these words that sort of have the same feel and the same satisfying um, outcome to them but they don't they don't really mean anything to anyone in this world I would argue that made them more interesting honestly yeah if BSG, Absolutely. BSG said fuck instead of frack that show would not have been the same not at all so what do you think we get so so hung up on words? I mean, you know, <clears throat> parents especially, you know, they don't want their kids to hear anything. But I hear parents and they're cursing around their kids all the time, but they don't, they don't want to take them to anything that's PG-13. I, I've seen this. This is a real thing. So I don't understand that. They'll curse around their friends and around their kids all the time, but they won't take them to see anything that's quote unquote edgy. And I don't understand that because the kids know the words. I mean, we all heard them when we were in school by the second grade, if not earlier. What's the deal? Is language a little too over focused on over sensationalized? Maybe, maybe that's the word. It's just the society that we live in. I mean, when you think about, you know, where we are politically, you know, in half the country, red state, blue state, that means you have a lot of people that are still, you know, religious, non religious, and probably that same designation. So it comes from a lot of that upbringing. Cause I mean, you think PG 13, it's all the, the fucking sexy stuff that's going to be in there. That's, that's the two things that people are like, I don't know if I want to have my kids to see that. Um, I literally had a, a person yell at me when we were teaching seventh graders about, you know, French kissing and stuff. And I was like, and she's what? like, why are you teaching the kids about French kissing? I was like, we're not teaching the kids about French kissing. We're teaching the kids about respect because they're already French kissing, whether you want to believe it or not. Just like they're already saying fucking, whether you believe it or not. Hang on. Sidebar. Uh oh, <laughs> there's a class for this and they let you teach it. Yeah. Just, I want to go on the record before we get letters or we get banned from the internet. 
you do not interact with these children, correct? Like, correct. You're at correct. a distance of some sort. There's a yes. blackboard. Here, let me show you on the doll how to do this. No, we are not teaching them how to French kiss. We are teaching them when to French kiss. How do you teach somebody? Uh, is this a question I probably shouldn't ask because I don't want to get make you look creepy or anything? I don't. I don't want to mess you up. Too late. <laughs> you brought it up, man. If you want, I will edit all that out. You just let me know. No, give it in. It's okay. Fine. This is something that is it just so that they feel comfortable with their their own mouths? I, I got nothing. We got to move on. <laughs> no, it, right, so, it's it's literally about how to it's literally how to respect yourself and how to respect women. And there's a time and a place for these things, and not to be doing it in the under the bleachers. Oh, gotcha. Um, that's the best place to do it. Uh, but what, I think what Troy's trying to say is that the reason why parents get this way or about kids in particular is that you can't you got to be careful what kind of licenses you're writing off for kids and by going to a movie you're like that has cursing in it you start writing licenses for them that would give them the ability of of cursing like a sailor and they don't have the amount of wherewithal to understand when is the right time when is the wrong time to actually use words like that and it's a about how to sit there and use it respectfully or not respectfully and that's what Troy is actually getting at, uh, even though he took it down the weirdest fucking way possible. See, I already broke it because of Troy. But like, like so so we talked a little bit like Troy talked a little bit about his family. Uh, my brother uh, cursed like a sailor, which worked out because he was a sailor for 20 years, but he had been cursing like a sailor since he was six years old. Uh, my parents did not let that happen with myself or my little sister. So even though my brother's running around, you know, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, if I said anything near like that, they would, they wouldn't even bother with the soap, even though I did get the soap every now and again, mm, yeah, I, got I, I got smacked hard. Uh, even if I got close to that, to the point where I'm a 40 year old man. And every now and again, whenever I let shit slip out in front of my dad, I look at him real quick to see if I'm going to get hit. I never use, uh, or I try not to use profanity in my professional life, but like personal, I swear probably too much. You'll, you'll notice we hardly ever do it on the podcast because we just haven't. We're reintroducing the explicit tag. Eh, and this is the way to do it. It's the way I look at it. Uh, but my mother doesn't swear, so I don't know. I honestly have no idea where I picked it up. I grew up in a very, very poor neighborhood, so I'm sure that's where I got a lot of it. But I don't, I'm not supposed to swear around her. I do, and I get, I get the shittiest looks, let me tell you. Like, I'm so disappointed in you, son. Oh, yeah, I... My dad, I'll, I'll let this let it slip out with it every, every now and again. But my mom, if she was still here, well, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. That now duck immediately if I let something <laughs> slip. <laughs> what do you? I got an, a legitimate question. So, uh, John, you, you don't have kids. Troy, you do have kids, but uh, you know you both have opinions on, on this. I'm sure because I know Troy, or you both love these kind of cartoons, these adult cartoons like your Archer or, um, Bojack Horseman <laughs> or Team America. Fuck yeah. You know, those kinds of things. South Park South with an Park. actual shit counter. Yes, exactly. You know, you have cartoons where it could very easily, a kid could wander into the woods of these and think it's going to be like, well, this is just some fun entertainment. I can't wait to watch. Oh my God. And then they hear a song about Uncle Fucker. Does that, do you think that's <laughs> concerning? Do you think that parents should be more concerned and keep an, a better <clears throat> eye on this stuff? Or is it like, hey, we need entertainment that appeals to all ages? Where do you where do you land on this? I mean, as the parent, I would tell you that it's actually easier now than it was when we were growing up. Because when we're growing up, you can just you know go through the channels and stop on whatever you want to watch. You know, today you have the ability to do the parental control feature on these streaming services. So by locking it down, there's less chance of them actually stumbling upon it. Where they'll find it is in the unmonitored interwebs. So if they have their iPads for school or mm. their own laptops or their phones or whatever, that's when they're getting YouTube links sent to them from their friends. Um, and then they're going to Snapchat and like saying all this stuff on Snapchat and then deleting because the snaps delete. So you don't really know that it's actually happening. So that's where the kids are sneakier is that they're sharing it over their internets versus actually doing it through TV and movies. I wonder how many parents use that parental Not control. many people use the parental controls because that's what it just, it's too hard. I don't, I don't remember the password. Yeah. It's four digits. Come on. Make it your birthday. It's it's too hard. It'll take you 30 seconds. Ah, I'm so pissed. Yeah, your kids will never remember your birthday. <laughs> that's, that's actually true. That's sadly yeah. true. That's ad, oddly accurate. 
The only per- the only person <laughs> in my in my house's birthday that I had to remember remember besides my own was my mother. Anybody else's didn't matter. But if I forgot hers, it was all hell to pay. Oh yeah, yeah, that feels right. Is like the right answer. So it doesn't really turn you off. Uh, do you seek it out? Do you like profanity? Do you like swearing? Do you miss R rated movies? Because I I really do. I miss R rated comedies especially because we hardly get them anymore. I think the pandemic kind of wiped them out. I mean, they're good, but think... they're not. They're not. They were never really big money makers to begin with. Oh, they used no. That's not true. They used to be super bad. Uh, I mean, they got it going through. They were knocked up. Think... No, there's a there's a ton of Judd Apatow made a whole living off of R rated comedy. So there's a lot. Of, there were a lot old yeah, school stuff like version. that. Yeah, forty year old version, and then they just died. People stop paying for it. I don't know if that has to do with the pandemic. I think that actually has to do more with the fact that we live in such a world where if you say anything that's remotely uh, off color you're, or non-PC, you're going to get attacked for it or be, you know, and, and like, let's take Tropic Thunder, for example. You can't make that movie again. You really can't. I wonder. And, I wonder about that one all the I really, really do. I wonder about it. Well, the funny thing about that one is that is that you've got Robert Downey Jr. running around in blackface, and that's okay because everyone's mad at Ben Stiller for the, doing the the Simple Jack movie, <laughs> which was so spot on. I mean, if you go look at, I mean, there was a, a heavy focus on going to have a short haircut, going to have khakis, going to have you know all these small ticks that happen to these characters. And Sean Penn was up for an Oscar for the same kind of role, and I mean, it's very much mocking the actors themselves. He wasn't mocking people he was mocking characters and actors which was funny but right people didn't i guess some people still don't get the joke he did go on the record and said i'm not apologizing for it though no he, sh- he shouldn't it's not like he was running around using the hard r word which is something that annoys me because now i can't actually say the hard r word anymore yeah don't say that that's don't include that in the profanity discussion i don't want any part of that nope <laughs> nope nothing to do with it Stay. I am kind of disappointed, though, speaking to that, that they have not made a new Team America World Police because it would totally have worked great for the election in January 6th and all that stuff. <laughs> they could, Yeah, they could have done a tie-in movie, I guess. Would there be more sex? Sex with puppets? Maybe. That's the important part. That's a whole other, that's a whole other topic. I don't I, have time to do that. You want to call that sex, but Nancy okay. Nancy gavel? I don't know. Oof. Did you say you wouldn't call that sex? What would you call it? I, isn't there like a whole scene where the puppet shits all over the other puppet? People are into whatever they're into, John. I feel like you're judging people a little too harshly. Just because you're not I'm, into maybe it. Maybe I am. Doesn't make it wrong. Uh, you know what? I, if they're both consenting I, adults and they choose to do things puppets. like that with puppets or otherwise, <laughs> it's all good. Hey, I'm fine with it being puppets. I watched uh, the Happy Happy uh, Time Murders. That's, that's Oh, I totally forgot about that movie. Not even good, though. I mean, that's like... Yeah, with the the puppet, like the cow, yeah, uh, the octopus good. milking the cow for the porno. All right. is When is it too much? Let's talk about that. When is it too much? And by the way, I, I found this fun fact. I don't know if it's true, but it was true. But Leslie Jonah Hill is cursed more on screen than Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I cannot believe that. That's, that's what has been reported. I don't know how accurate it is. I'm not going to go count them all. But, you know, I would say I'm just leaping off that. I think The Wolf of Wall Street, while I like the movie... That's too much. I think it, it's like swearing for the, it's very much like Deadwood to me. I just felt like it, they got to a point where it was just swearing for swearing's sake, as opposed to good writing. Yeah. Or emphasis. It's kind of like um, when it becomes the primary language versus the actual language of the movie. So you have more swear words than you have actual words. I think that's where it comes out. Like I, I didn't like Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back for that reason or hmm. Summer of Sam. Cause I think it was just too, too much too much. Oh, Summer too Sam much. was really bad with that. Yeah, but Uncle yeah, Summer Jen's Sam was really I, bad, but don't you dare say anything about Jay and Silent Bob. I just said bad. I didn't like it. I didn't say it was a bad movie. I said I didn't like it. You, mm, because you, it had too much That's what he swear. said. That's what he said. But now, like, Uncut Gems? I think Uncut, Uncut Gems is fantastic. That definitely has a lot of swearing, too. A lot of swearing. I think it's number two behind Wolf of Wall Street. There, there's a lot of different... Uh, I mean, for a long time, South Park, I think, held that. And... For me, as long as the characters make sense, if, if you told me that Goodfellas had the record, it makes sense to me. Those guys, that's just, that's their language. That's how they talk. Wolf of Wall Street, it just felt forced. It felt so forced all the time. 
feel like they were trying so hard to make them edgy and they just never felt edgy. And I know people love that movie, so it's probably just me, but it just never worked for me. The only parts that worked for me were Margot Robbie <laughs> and that's, and, and Matthew McConaughey. What about you guys? What, what, give me an example of when the swearing was too much where it just took you out of it and you said, I'm done. Checked out. Can't do it. Defending my sensitive ears. Well, I gave my two. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we're not easily offended. That's what I'm getting here because nobody's really chiming in. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's not a lot of movies that it was just too much swearing, but for me, it's more so the when it's used improperly, like Born Identity, I felt the swearing in that movie felt forced and it felt out of place. And that it made me a little bit crazy. The movie itself is great and fun and it's got a, it's a great spy spy thriller, you know, but the, the swearing in it just somehow always felt um, forced to me. And then, and then there's a, a point in the incredible Hulk movie also is another one that has so many different like moments where it's like trying to hard with it, with the, mm-hmm. with the swearing it's, it's using moments that it doesn't really need to use moments and, and throwing a swear word in it. And it just feels so out of place. Those are the times that bothers me. How about the times when they were, they uh, were going for the R rating. Because it's very important. Let's say Logan, right? We had to go for the R rating for Logan. Cause you got Wolverine dropping F bombs left and right. Was that necessary for a character that hadn't done that until then? Other than I think he said it in one little tiny. I think for his place where he was mentally, I think the swearing makes sense. But you're going to get the R rating for that movie anyway because of just the amount of killing. Right, but I'm saying just take that out of there because a lot of people were talking about, oh, it's got to get the R rating and language is an important part. So do you feel like it needed to be there? Like, could they get that character without going their language one? Uh, I mean, ultimately, yes. Yes, I think you can. You don't actually need to punctuate everything with swearing for that character. At the same time, that character swearing is one of the few comic book characters that... that th- Throwing out a swear word every now and again makes the most sense. But he wasn't doing it every now and again. I mean, he was dropping F bombs like a lot. Okay. Well, like he's Dave he, Chappelle or something. I think it's tomato, tomato. I, I think it's needed in the front half of that movie. The front half of the movie, okay. he's just a he's just a defeated person. So if like you were talking about like product of where you grew up, you know, it's like you get into a certain state of mind or, you know, lack of job or what have you and you, know, you just can't get ahead. You you tend to like probably go lean that route. So I think it makes sense for the front half of that movie for sure until he finally has his purpose. Okay. Illinois, I get it. Just just asking honest questions, man. Like because there there are a lot of movies where they say they need to go for the R rating because that's that's the true audience, you know. Um, now it could be usually it's for violence, I think, but a lot of time, you know, Expendables that was one that they went back to PG thirteen and then we went back to R. Because they felt like they weren't getting the, the same thing. But that wasn't language. That was about violence. But then there's our, the other characters that I think you have to go R. Like Deadpool. They did that PG-13 rated cut. And that sucked, I think. It was yeah, neutered. it was not the same movie. Nope. Not at all. Yeah, you can't do De- Deadpool. That's another one that just just you cannot do that without <laughs> without breaking the third wall and saying some off-color shit. But I will tell you. Full disclosure, that's those movies, I love those movies. On the same token, there are moments and jokes where they go too far, where I think, okay, now you're just swearing just to swear. You're just saying shit because you can, as opposed to it actually fits the character. I think that happens a lot in Deadpool. I just forgive it because the other jokes fire so much. <laughs> There's moments where you annoy the shit out of me. Other moments, eh, you make up for it. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why he's still friends with me. Exactly. Mm. pretty accurate and i'm apparently uh, i can learn a lot about french kissing later so there's yeah. that yeah i that's gonna be a fun class <laughs> okay i can't wait till the restraining order hits you <laughs> is there any movie or tv show that could have been improved by either adding or removing the language that's something i want to add anything one of the things that I thought was interesting is like, so Shawshank Redemption is one of those movies that does have a lot of swear words in it. Mm-hmm. And um, if you remove all the swear words in that movie, you still have uh, a beautiful story that has a great redemption arc that has a great, all the moments in which you can remove the swear words in and you replace it with something cleaner. They actually still hit the exact same way. So uh, even though your question is, can you improve or uh, a movie by adding or removing, this is one of those moments where 
the movie itself stands above whatever you're trying to take away as far as language is concerned. Which was why it was on TNT like every weekend. <laughs> True. They could edit it pretty clean. Yeah. 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 Uh, I will say, and, and, I mean, because I'm just spiraling off Shawshank, that immediately makes me think of Prison Break. Prison Break, to me, as much as I love that show, really never felt like a true prison because of the lack of swearing. Because oh, yeah. I just knew it would be a lot grittier than it was, and it felt pretty fake because of that. Yeah, yeah that's. We, I, I think I, if you added swearing to Prison Break, I would need to have to take a shower after every scene that had tea bag in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. He probably taught French kissing. <laughs> Sorry. Trey. Easy joke. <laughs> Easy joke. Yuck. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff. You know, there are definitely, um, like, serenity is is one thing where I would have kind of liked to have seen some, some profanity sp- spiced in there, peppered in there a little bit, just because it was taking a TV show and kind of taking it to the big screen. And I think it would have been better served by making it more adult and doing all the things they couldn't do on TV, but they didn't choose to do that. There, there are some other times that I, I feel like I appreciate that filmmakers can find a way to tell a story without having to make it very saucy where it doesn't have to be, you know, where people can take their kids and actually go enjoy things and not have to deal with swearing. And there are other things where I'm like, that just deserves the, the last boy scout. I don't want that neutered. I've seen the edited version. I don't want stuff like that neutered. I don't, he fucks a squirrel. I, I think that's important information that we need to be part Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think a lot about uh, stand up comedy. So you have your stand up comedians who do not curse, and then you have your stand up comedians who all they do is curse, mm-hmm. and every other word is curse. Uh, and sometimes the the stand up comedian that I, that, that I appreciate the most is those who who find a way to still be funny and without using curse words and without pushing the profanity, which is funny because sometimes if you let me off the chain, I'm going to curse up every single time I can, just because I hate everything. But um, that the a yeah, like if I if I think about Sinbad, I think Sinbad is hysterical and he does not curse in his his routines and. Uh, you know, when I flip it back over to uh, one of my favorite com- comics or of the more modern era right now is actually Tom Segura. Now, Tom Segura does curse, but he uses it as uh, as uh, a specific tool in his co- comedy. He doesn't use it as uh, a crutch or anything else like that. He's very deliberate and very careful with his delivery on all the words he's using, and that's that's why it's okay. But then. Uh, but yeah, it's like a it's like a, a nice little dichotomy in which I will almost always appreciate the guy who doesn't curse the most because that seems like a lot harder work. Is that why you're trying not to swear this episode? Because you want to be better than Troy and I? Because fuck you, man. Um, no, I just thought it'd be funny because you've been having to edit my ass um, yeah, that's fair. for months now, ever since I got uh, uh, to this, this fuck it all kind of uh, mentality, so... I thought I'd I'd be make it easier on you. Yeah, good job. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking that back though. I'm just letting it linger. All right. So people have to wonder, and they be like, "Man, I wonder if that was real." I'm not gonna tell you. They know it's not real. Oh, it was totally real. You know what show would be amazing <laughs> with swear words in it? Huh? Dawson's Creek. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Because these these guys these these kids had the weirdest language. Like teenagers do not talk the way the kids from Dawson's Creek talked in that show. That's fair. And, and I think that given that there was always this, this theme of like Pacey and Joey were from the wrong side of the Creek and you know, um, Oh my gosh, uh, Dawson and Pacey would yeah. Pacey and Joey were from the wrong side and Dawson and Michelle Williams character. Oh, I, I don't know. I've never name. seen an episode of that show. Not um, they were more from the, the proper side of the Creek. So it would have been cool to see more trailer Trailer mouth, Joey. Cocker side of the Greek. <laughs> what kind of shitty small town is this? But I mean, yeah, it would have been cool to see more trailer mouth Joey or trailer trash Pacey kind of, you know, getting that, you know, kind of side to him, kind of like Ozark, where he had, you know, the birds versus everybody else. Oh my God. God. You're going to have to fucking kill me. Now I got that in my head. God damn it, Ruth. I miss her already on my shows. I want, I want more Ozark. Something. Um, But, uh, Back to the Future would be fine if you took out all the swear words. And then more people could see it because it'd probably be PG versus Is there really that many swear words in Back to the Future? There's enough. 
Hmm. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough, I guess. Uh, I don't, I can tell you by edited versions of things that I've seen, whenever something is completed, I don't think it should be messed with. That's what I think. I think it should air as it was filmed. And if kids don't, can't watch it because their parents don't want them to watch it, then so be it. But I, I, I think the editing, the neutering of product is a, is a problem for me. I don't. Well, like I think it. all of it is done, you know, to protect the children. And it's like, isn't that the parents' job? Yeah, that is the parents' job. I had kids. You know what? I, I, you can tell what a thing is rated by looking it up and putting some effort in. There's so many sites now where you can actually find out exactly what the words are if you really want to know. You can find you, out everything. You can find out when to freaking pee, man. And even though I don't necessarily condone common sense media because of the organization that runs behind it common sense media actually does have pretty good common sense because it's not just the common sense raters that rate it it's also parents and kids so the kids will tell you like hey this movie is okay for like 10 year olds and here's why or the parents will be like well it's like 12 year olds and here's why and then you can get an average rating of 11 so it actually works out pretty well um i don't know what i was gonna say but it was pro it was profound you guys missed that. That's just, it was that's fucking like magical. Life. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> uh, you messed out. You guys are so good at wishing you knew what I was thinking. But even I can't remember. All right, so let's move on to our favorite lines of profanity from any movie or TV show. Anything you want to talk about. I I had so many. I was starting to feel uncomfortable with the fact that I could come up with so many right off the top of my head. I actually didn't have to look any of these up. Not a single one. I knew all of them by heart. So I'm just hoping I got the words right. Cause that's pretty funny. Cause I had a hard time thinking about any of them and I went through the easiest ones to go. Are you kidding I me? I have so many things. I did not realize how number one, how profane I am. Um, I swear a lot and don't realize it. Number two, I quote a lot of movies and don't realize it. Cause I, one of my favorite sayings that I say all the time is I'm a bastard, but I'm not a fucking bastard. That's from, that's from, from dust till dawn. And that was right at the top of my, I, of my head. But not yeah, the top of my list because I didn't realize I'm just sitting there going, well, that's my thing. I never fucking say that. That's from a movie. <laughs> I stole it. <laughs> we also know why that was at the top of your list. Why? Because I'm a bastard, but I'm not a fucking bastard. Yeah, you know, the my my lines from 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 um Evil Dead or or Army of Darkness are I none of them are the curse word lines. It it's all the uh it, it's all groovy i've said groovy a thousand times a day and and or uh hail to the king baby i s- used to say that a lot you know but there's that the the curse words don't stick with me the ones that i the, the one movie that has curse words in it where i'm sitting or and it sticks with me like jay and silent mob strike back every now and again i catch myself going what the fuck is the internet <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because of that one scene there's just times where I find something that just sticks to me and I, on the internet and I'm like, what the fuck is the internet right now? And so that's one. And then it's just the one time where uh, Silent Bob starts to talk in that movie. He s- starts trying to uh, mime the, si- the, the, the image of a sign and Jay's like, you know, I don't, what are you trying to say? Just say it. Just say it already. And Bob starts screaming at him, the sign on the back of the truck critters of hollywood you dumb fuck like i love that scene just because you got these two people who know each other so much and that guy barely says anything ever and yet this is the one time where the his partner does not know what he's trying to say and it's the most obvious thing possible that's when she said you brought up jane said above the line in clerks um hey try not to suck any dicks on the way to the parking lot oh yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> I've said those words before. <laughs> oh my god, <It's> so funny! <laughs> I think all mine are quotes where it's like you don't need the word where it actually ends up landing. So I'm thinking um, trading places. Uh, the guy when he's sitting there at the phone booth and he's having the conversation, and the woman's waiting to to use the phone booth, and he's trying to finish, and then he just kind of says, "Hang on," and he turns around and he's like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> and then the lady just walks away and doesn't even look at him cross eyed. <laughs> And he just goes back scene. to the phone conversation. It's just so random. Um, the um, speed, uh, Keanu Reeves, when they're he's talking to Alan Ruck's character about uh, trying to like relay what he's seeing about the bomb under the bus over the phone, mm-hmm. and he's like, he's like, he's like, you know, we got a wad. There's some wires. Fuck me. Oh darn. <laughs> that whole sequence. <laughs> because I think it's just like the perfect delivery from Keanu when he says, "Fuck me." Um, then we have, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, 
right? Fuck you. That's my name. Oh, God. That's a good one. <laughs> you that's know why, one. mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here and I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. <laughs> that's a great scene. It's a good one. Scene. And then uh, the Julia Lewis Dreyfus, I think, was just, you know, because we were watching her in Seinfeld all those years, but in Veep, you know, when she's the vice president, she's like, I'm the vice president of the United States, you stupid little fuckers. <laughs> Is that show good? I, I've never watched Veep, but I know it's, I know it's pretty profane. It's like an R rated it, it was pretty good the first like half of the run it just i think it just went on too long but the first few seasons are definitely definitely funny alec baldwin's a good swear he's good when he but does he does it. it he does it in a way that it's got class almost anytime he does it totally uh so my favorites some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill because not sure exactly what it means but i think i get it and i don't care it's still it's badass blades badass go fuck yourself san diego Mm-hmm. It's a classic line. That's that's pretty classic. I, you guys should be laughing more at that. That's funny shit. I don't understand. Forty eight hours, Jack. Tell me a story. Fuck you. That's one of my favorites. Like that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arlie Ermy and Full Metal Jacket. Pretty much just anything he said. Out fucking standing. I'll gouge your eyeballs out. Skull fuck you. I mean, he's just the worst person on the planet Earth. He's great with mm-hmm. with an f bomb. Um. Fuck you! I'm fucking dying over here. I'm fucking dying over at Tim Roth and Reservoir Dogs. Just that's just a powerful scene. Then of course you've got the Pulp Fiction English motherfucker. Do you speak it? <laughs> and then that's Pride fucking with you. Fuck Pride. Marcellus Wallace. That's great. What the fuck is so funny about me? Joe Pesci. Goodfellas. Isn't that one of the best scenes in film? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we can at least agree on that. Okay. So I'm going to give you some Ford Fairlane quotes. Oh, shit. The the entire movie. I've got a couple. Uh, hey, great pipes, huh? I've heard, cu- I've heard cats fuck with more harmony. <laughs> then, then, of course, you've... <laughs> Unfucking believable. Oh! Uh, excuse me. Did I hear the F word out of you? You say fuck again, and I'll bang you right to fuck. Now get the fuck out of here. When he's talking to the kid. Oh, my <laughs> God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just coming to America. Uh, Hello, New York. Fuck you. Fuck you too. <laughs> or at, barbershop. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you too. Who's next? <laughs> Axel Foley. Axel Foley is another Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is the best with curse words, man. Disturbing mm-hmm. to peace. I got thrown out of a window. What's the fucking charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? This is bullshit. <laughs> One of my favorites. I could watch Beverly Hills Cop all day long. Um, Lethal Weapon. Roger Murtaugh, I'm too old for this shit. That's classic. That's a classic line. Can't put it on a t-shirt. It might offend somebody. Captain Murphy in the same, and I think it was Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, Riggs. That's why I don't have an ulcer, because I know when to say, I don't give a fuck. Love that guy. Oh, that's right. That's where the sign goes, where he throws the sign, the, the no smoking sign, and it says, what does this say? It say? Well, it says it's the same thing as it says on the door over here. Throws it back at him, says, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Plays off what the Gap said. It's great. God, I love those movies. That's back when Mel Gibson wasn't so, when he wasn't, uh, when it wasn't uncomfortable to be a fan. You know, when you, when you could say, I like Mel Gibson without looking around, make sure th- nobody's throwing anything at you. Right. Ah, the good old days. I mean, it's probably better this way, but <laughs> at least we know. Is, this, is that the same as Jonathan Majors when you were like, hey, he's kind of good in looking? Hey. Allegedly. <laughs> Don't know what's going on there. Uh, in Bruges. You never seen Bruges? I can't give you a quote. I can just say the whole movie, the whole movie, is just like full of of f bombs. Boondock Saints when the cat fucking blows up. That's awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> and they go in the tirade. I, oh my God. I can't go to the market without running into ten fucking guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got some listeners. Uh, that we asked. We asked our Facebook uh, group. Hey, give us some of your favorite movie lines with profanity. You guys want to hear some of these? Because, you know, unless you guys have some more, do you have some more you want to talk about of your own? The, the good use of the word shit inside of Forrest Gump, I thought was great. And he's like, well, you just stepped in a pile there. It happens. What? Shit? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh, boy. Now we got a bumper sticker. Uh, Josh Steinman said, we, we asked, what's your favorite use of, of swearing in a movie or TV show? Josh Steinman says, Clark Griswold losing his shit after getting his initial bonus check in Christmas Vacation. Here's the Tylenol. That one's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, Drew Ross said uh, Wolf of Wall Street is better than all other movies. Well, sorry, Drew. We're on opposite pages. 
Ty Nelson from Lebowski, the Big Lebowski. There's just one thing, dude, and what's that? Do you have to use so many cuss words? What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, dude, have it your way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Matt Barnes says, an all-timer for me is when Palmer reacts with, you gotta be fucking kidding when he sees the Nora spider head thing in the thing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Okay, so Brian Williams, um, former host of the show, his is, is a little dicier because I can't really get into it. Um, have any of you guys ever seen Way of the Gun? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, do you recall the opening scene of that particular film? Yes. No. Okay. So, Troy, you do. You said no. I don't remember it. Are you kidding? That's where he basically starts beating the shit out of Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Sarah Silverman was in that movie. The very beginning, the opening of that movie is like five minutes long, maybe. And Sarah Silverman is the woman that is yelling at Ryan Felipe and Vinicio del Toro all, all over and over and over again. And I think Ryan Felipe says something along the lines of shut that something up before I fuck start her head. Now do you recall? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. For starting to remember. Okay. Yeah. That is Sarah Silverman that he's yelling at and gets in a fight with. Okay. But that's his, that's his favorite one. And I agree that opening scene is intense. It's wild. It's just one of those lines. I just, I'm not going to say the whole line. I just can't, but the whole scene is really funny. And super edgy. Yeah, you could actually keep Sarah Silverman and replace the boyfriend in the scene with Sean William Scott and then replace Ryan Felipe with Benito and Benicio del Toro with Jason Biggs and Brecken Meyer, and it would actually become a sex comedy <laughs> in that opening scene. That's an interesting way to look at it, Troy. Somebody needs help. <laughs> uh Dave McGraw said Steve Martin losing his shit at the rental car lady in planes, trains, and automobiles. That's gotta be probably the great the greatest profanity lace scene of all time right or at least top five that's in my top five for sure and especially it's because the, it's because her response back to him you're fucked <laughs> is perfect so good is there an award we can give samuel l jackson for being the best at saying motherfucker in the history of film like nobody says it better or can you give me somebody that says motherfucker better than samuel l jackson no way come on john you like to think outside the box uh denzel washington nope no. Nope. Name it. Name a movie where you said it better than Samuel L. Jackson. I'm going to have to look it up. Because it's not true. It just doesn't exist. Al Pacino would be the only one that could probably come close. No, because... Ah, motherfucker! Like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Is that> better? <laughs> hoo -ah! hoo yeah, motherfucker! That's, that's my Al Pacino. <laughs> that's the best they could do. Wasn't it... Wasn't it, uh, that was, it that was, was amazing. Heat, wasn't it? Wasn't it heat? Don't waste my motherfucking time. <laughs> Don't waste my motherfucking uh, time! <laughs> he says he says motherfucker in in uh training day. He says King Kong ain't got nothing on me too, but All right. Okay. And you don't even see you don't even sound convinced. You're like, well, he says I think he says motherfucker in training day. I uh, I think he said motherfucker in equalizer. You challenged so, me to think of somebody who, who and you challenged nope, me to think I of somebody. I challenge you to who think of somebody feel. that says it better and you can't think you can't you have no reference point. You're just like, ah, uh, Denzel Washington. Because he's a good actor. Okay. Give me the yeah. better motherfucker. All right. Well, you know, I don't have time for this. Hey, <laughs> what about what about Carlito's way? I'm reloaded. Come in here, motherfuckers. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Nope. No. Nope. Mm -mm. You're up against it now, motherfuckers. I'm going to blow your fucking brains out. I mean, here, here's how mm. you can... You, you just know you're the best at it. They made an entire movie just to get him to say, get these... Mo I want these motherfucking snakes off my motherfucking plane. Just so they could make him say a mo two motherfuckers back to back. The whole movie was made just around that. You know what I loved about that movie is that when it came out, there was a, a way that you can actually have Samuel L. Jackson call up your friends as like a recording of them. And he, so he would call up and, and it would be like uh, it, it, Samuel L. Jackson's voice. And somehow they pro they programmed as many names possible in there. And it'd be Samuel L. Jackson. Hey, John, motherfucker, you know, and just start going <laughs> off. And in the in this voicemail recording that he's leaving for you. I had a, and this is probably 10 or 15. You remember when Waze was a thing? Yep. Somebody had made a, and, and I don't think it was Sam Jackson proper. I think it was just like a mockery of him or a, an homage, if you will. And they had like a Samuel L. Jackson directions thing. It only worked in like 
big cities it wouldn't work in rules, but it worked, but it worked in big cities. But turn left, motherfucker. I mean, it was just like that kind of stuff. And I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And it was only around for about a month. So I'm guessing he had people that said, "No, that's not me." But it was awesome. Just think, you're trying. Wouldn't that be so? It's so much better than the Google Maps lady. The Morgan Freeman one I still think was the best. What is that one? Oh, please get busy right. turning or get busy dying. <laughs> there's, the, there's the Snoop Dogg one that I've heard on on some of them. I haven't heard Snoop Dogg. That would be kind of laid back. I could probably drive to that. Yeah, turn left for shizzle. Didn't Samuel L. Jackson do the uh, the audiobook? What was it uh, go the fuck to sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man has made so much money off his ability to say fuck. It, there, there can't be anybody that does it better than him. And we didn't even say Yippie Kaye Motherfucker, by the way, is a, is a great movie line, too. Oh, I don't know how he missed that. You know, we're, sp- we're going off about Samuel L. Jackson, and one of my favorite uh, sa- favorite animations of him that I love to use is him saying what from, um, from Coming to America when he's, the, he's robbing the place, and he's like, what? <laughs> what I love is there, there are actual supercuts on YouTube where you can you can find it. It's just Sam Jackson swearing over and over and over and over and over again. There's also a John Favreau only cut from um, Iron Man of of him delivering mo- a motherfucker as Nick Fury. Oh, God, I, I I remember that. Yeah, they just came out recently, right? They brought that out just recently. Yep, they brought it out just recently, where it was just something special that John Favreau wanted for himself, and he's got it in his own archives. Yeah, that's great. Any uh, any final words on swearing in, in film or TV, guys, before we move on to our whole game? I think we're good for today. Okay. We can always revisit. Fucking A. So share your thoughts on this episode or anything else in our Facebook group at Buy Popcorn or on our site, thehollywoodoutsider.com. You can rate and subscribe us on your preferred podcast app. We're going to play a game called Punch It Up. Punch It Up. Since we have profanity as a theme, we're going to take a famous line, any movie line that's very well known and make it better by adding profanity. Improve it. John, you get to go first. We get two, we get two rounds of this. So what's your first one? What are you going to punch up? All right. So uh, the, the punched up line, because I didn't copy down the whole line. I just punched it up right away. But this is from Forrest Gump. Mm. Mi- miracles happen every day. Some people don't fucking think so, <laughs> but they do. Good. I like it. I like it. Troy? Oh, are you, we're going to go two rounds. We'll come back. All right. Um, Elliot and E.T. when he's on the bike coming to the woods for the first time he's like don't fucking crash <laughs> okay uh, my first one Casablanca classic film here's looking at you fucko nothing cricket it kind of works <laughs> yeah it kind of works okay Ron I almost wanted to be like here's looking at you bitch no, yeah. well, that's just, I was trying to think offensive. of fucko was like an appropriate time era <laughs> word yeah I'm sure they said fucko a lot back then you're getting your hat on, you're solving crimes, and you're saying, fuck oh, I get it. Round two. From Mary Poppins, and it's Mary Poppins saying this, he traveled all around the world, and everywhere he went, he'd he'd use his word, and all, all would say, there goes that clever fucker. <laughs> okay. All right, Troy. Yes. Uh, hunt for Red October. Give me a ping, Vissele. One ping only, you shit. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Mine's Apollo thirteen. Houston, we have a fucking problem. Because <laughs> that's exactly how they'd be yes, saying that's it. Exactly how they should be saying it, for sure. Ah, and we also I, I threw that into the uh, the Facebook group just to kind of ask them if they, see if anybody came up with anything clever. There were some fun ones here. Uh, Scott Cargero said that's where I'll be under the fucking sea from Little Mermaid. And also, fucking kiss the girl. I'm like, well, that just sounds a little angry. Uh, Ty Nelson said, open the fucking pod bay doors, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> kind of changes the whole movie. That's great. <laughs> uh, Skylar Glovier, they're taking the hobbits to fucking Isengard. It's good. That's good. <laughs> Andreas Greisel says, fuck you, Rose, and let's go with the door. <laughs> 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 I think I'm all swore. You know what? We, we've swore so much that it's just neutered now. I don't ever want to swear again. I think I'm good. I think I'm cleansed. That's how it goes. Mm, I'm all right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. So remember, everybody, the next time you head to a theater or stream comfortably from your fucking couch, buy popcorn. Fuck yeah.
I'm all swore up. I got nothing left. Nothing in the tank. Yeah, I'm bored with it now. <laughs>